Hi everyone, I hope this will work and I'm going to speak really quite fast because for me to try and get everything I want to say inside five minutes maybe is going to be tricky. Um, this is the first of three films. This is a general approach to a couple of the questions that the RSC has, have asked me to look at. Okay, here we go. I will be looking at uh, Act 2, Scene 2, Macbeth, the, after they've killed Macbeth, Lady Macbeth and her husband. I will treat them as female and male for the purposes of this exercise though it, they can be done either way around and the hamlet soliloquy oh what a regan rosen peasant slave am i regan plays as i so i can't even say it myself okay first thing up don't be intimidated by this language i was at 24 i played anthony at stratford at 24 and i was very intimidated by the language i didn't think it was mine it took the great sis berry who was the voice coach at the rsc to say this is your language and get behind it. I always wanted to, but I didn't think I was worthy enough. I was born in the working class in the north of England and I didn't think <clears throat> uh, that was mine. I thought you had to talk standard English and proper and all that like all the other actors I saw around me. There's different ways of doing it. Make it yours. Um, uh, there is, of course, the business of the, the iambic pentameter. Ten beats in a line. rum ti tum 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 It's like... Um, it's like something you have to practice and know that it's there, but then practice, practice, practice and forget about it. Stanislavski, the great uh, method trainer of actors in Russia in the, the turn in the beginning of the 20th century, said the same thing. Practice, practice, practice and forget. It's like knowing that it's you've practiced it and just forget about it from now. Don't, if, if it needs to come up, then somebody or it, it can be addressed. It's a little bit like there's a football analogy coming up, folks, much as I don't like Liverpool. Uh, it's like Van Dyke at the back for Liverpool. He's a great presence, but he's there and it's solid and, and people just know he's there if you need him. Or alternatively, it's like a sort of um, a technical bouncy castle that you just, you just know it's there. So practice it and then forget about it. Um, it's like riding a bike or a car. You, you have to learn about the automatic, but then after a while you forget it. it it'll drive itself. Um, and if you get it wrong, you'll, you, you know sort of how to fix it. And if not, then Shakespeare, uh, whoever Shakespeare was that wrote the plays, he will tell you if you if you tune into him, he will tell you by the way it's written where your stresses and uh, non stresses should be. Um, uh, look, um, look at the folio as well as the the text that you're working with, you know, Arden or Penguin, Cambridge, Oxford versions. These are all things that editors have got out and put semicolons and commas in. The folio, sometimes uh, if you look at that, they run things together because they didn't do some of those things. They, they did and they don't, but it's a good alternative if you can get a copy of the folio uh, of the piece that you're looking at or, or, or generally. Um, for example, uh, Richard II tends to speak in verse, uh, whereas Bolingbroke in the same play is a bit more... Uh, solid sp speaks in 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 prose just in nods to verse as well but generally that's what happens because he wants if you like if for want of a better phrase Richard II is a little bit more flowery and he's, he's he, he believes in the divine right of kings and Bolingbroke's a bit more four square and it's reflected in the way almost the patterns that it is on the page um Cassius to Brutus that speech at the beginning where Cassius says can I have a word with you and um that's very very um, that's that's prose. It's just like if you like much more modern and colloquial, we can we can get it a little bit more. Taming of the Shrew is a bit like that as well, a bit more accessible. The plays like Cymbeline uh, are, are a little harder to grasp because of the. Um, I believe that Shakespeare was messing about. I think he was messing about with language. I think he enjoyed it. I think he just made things up. And there are words. I'll give you some example that he made up that we're in in our, in our language today. Um, <clears throat> Merry Wives of Windsor, the first act one, scene one, is, a, is but, but it's like a tennis match. And it's very, very, uh, it's just like people talking. It's, it's uh, compare the way that pat those patterns on the page are to other things. Um, uh, look at the books of Emma Smith. She's very good. She asked some very pertinent questions. There's a book called This is Shakespeare. It's a very good book. Each chapter is about her views, about how she asks some common sense questions about, about the play. I think that makes sense. She also has written a very good book or two 
on uh, the folio and how it was made just for if you're technically interested slightly nerdy but then I, I have my nerdy moments um <clears throat> remorselessness uh, is a is a word that we get from shape the remorse of sexist, but that's in a rogan peasant slave uh vaulting that's in the trammeled up speech in macbeth hobnob i know always worth a laugh hobnob isn't it besmirch and stopple stopple is very near the end of king lear so these are words that he makes so if he's enjoying it then you enjoy it get on board and ride the like a like a roller coaster like if the words are on the roller coaster it's a terrible analogy but if the words are on the roller coaster get on board and just enjoy it don't be intimidated by it as i say uh, don't ignore a line don't ignore a word don't ignore a line don't let it just slide by go moment to moment on it again we'll we'll investigate that a bit more in the hamlet speech um start slowly don't go to the next thought without getting the picture clear in your head i mean real slowly don't perform this no one's asking you to perform you're to investigate and support each other while <clears throat> while you're doing it um for instance you could you could you know take a view on things like do um do the macbeth scene that i'm doing act two scene two do it on the phone do it whispering with each other right close up because it's got that tension about it because this is two people one of whom said this is how you kill him and then and, and when the other person comes back and says did you do it and you, you go well this is and the, it all goes wrong but it's very very quick and very very tense um you know she's worked it out she said this is how you do it and then as i say it goes goes to pieces um it's very difficult this because it's there this brings into my sense memory sense memory being something that you've experienced that you can that you can um, if you like implant underneath the thought so that you can connect with it now it's very difficult you think when was the last time I killed somebody um, hopefully there's nobody out there that's doing that right now um, so you have to find something where you feel so you were so jealous or envious or desirous of having something that you were willing to do something really bad and then you feel bad about it it's because uh, that's his guilt uh you no one needs to know where you go for the moment of sense memory it's private you don't have to share it you just it's just about where it's coming from it's, so you can connect if you like organically inside so there's a motive behind what you're saying rather than just spouting the words um as i say with macbeth it's shock and guilt and all that with hamlet it's i feel a coward i should have done this i should have done that um if you haven't had these experiences, then what we do is use your imagination. The what if. If you don't know it, ping it up. What if? What if I was in this situation? What would I do? And then by doing what you would do, you think, well, the given is on the page, he or she doesn't do that. They, they do that. I don't do it. But you, So it gives you the line between what you would do and what the other person would do. Um, action. So imagine, use your imagination that for things that are outside your experience. Very difficult, for example, to imagine being married for 10 years and having a kid or being married for 20 and being repressed. For, they're very difficult. Like they, if you're 17, 18, it's very difficult to imagine that 40 actually isn't very old, but I know you think it is. Um, action the line, make it a verb. Um, in the Macbeth scene, uh, Mac Lady Macbeth says, why worthy Thane, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Brain sickly, there's another one he made up. Um, make it a, a verb. You could say, you could say, the choices could be, um, I cajole you uh, with, with that line, or I'm angry, that's under the line, or I soothe you. Um, uh, or I'm angry, but I repress it in order to keep you keep you alive and do do what you know, I, I manipulate you. It could you see to just make a choice and play it and play it to satisfaction, and the other person should be supporting that. Um, don't make the mistake of then making the whole speech or the whole scene about that action or about one sense memory. Change it up, make it specific. We go back to thought to thought, moment to moment. That's the important thing um and uh, and don't be tried to try to um afraid of trying anything uh as i say i think being vulnerable is one of the one of the best things you can do we are as hamlet said uh the abstract and brief chronicles of the time 
uh, now certainly more than ever as I as I speak this in the middle of this terrible uh, plague that the world is in the middle of we, we need that immediacy more than ever to reflect what's going on around us um, not everyone will agree with your choices S try different things by all means take suggestions uh, and you'll only know by trying it by getting it on its feet you won't do it by just sitting there reading it you've got to get it on its feet and give it a kinetic life and um look after each other and uh, and each other's way of doing it and respect that um it's again to end with a football analogy it's like liverpool i don't i don't like liverpool but i have to respect the way they play the game um good luck out there